Awesome. God is good. God is good. You know, I had a picture as we were worshiping. If you remind me, I'll tell you at the end. A good picture. Um, so, do you love God? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I, uh, they asked me to preach, so I didn't know uh, if I should. I don't like the word message, you know. So many people stand up there and say message, right? Uh, I want to touch your heart. I am a heart person, you know. And I'm working on that to be even more of a heart person. Because if we don't have the heart of God, we don't have much. But if we strive to be like him, to feel him, then we are getting someplace with him. And that's what we want to bring to this world, a piece of God. In each one of us, there is a piece of God. And when we gather together, this is awesome because there's more, more and more of God. So Pastor Travis was talking about uh, witnessing about the woman at the well. How many remember? And, you know, um, it is uh, my heart also uh, to be a witness. And this church was founded upon being a witness. If you were here long enough, you knew that we wanted the presence of God. And we wanted to be a witness out there, in here, everywhere. Because God loves it. He loves someone that share his fate or her fate. He loves someone that is on fire and you can see it in their eyes. So we got to be passionate about witnessing, okay? So you read in John 4 about the woman at the well. And because of this, because he preached a couple of weeks, I think, on the woman at the well. How many of you, by a, show me your hand, went out there and you uh, were witness? Oh, we got two here, three, four, five, six. We got a few. We got about 10%, right? But we're aiming for 100%. Because uh, some of you may say, well, uh, you know, I don't talk too much. I'm a shy person, blah, blah, blah. We can all give excuse. Right? Everybody can give an excuse. But uh, we don't want to give an excuse. And, and that's what the picture I got, what I was worshiping, uh, remind me, I'll tell you later, okay? So today I want to be simple and practical about sharing your faith. Tell your neighbor, he said, practical. Tell your neighbor, he said, simple. Simple and practical, okay? So I'm not going to quote a lot of scripture, uh, but I am going to be talking about being a witness. Because that's God's heart. And we all know the scripture, you know, he that winneth soul is wise. Is God wise? Yes, he is. Right. Um, remember the story of uh, Saul of Tarsus? Well, as far as I know, nobody witnessed to him. And God did it on his own. Jesus appeared to him, talked to him, and he got saved. And this is awesome. He did it himself. But 99% of the time, he wants us to do it. We have to understand that. May, we may pray for somebody that, uh, oh God, we pray that somebody would come and witness to them and testify and basically that they would get saved. Pray for more labor. Do we have that scripture? Okay, pray that the Lord... Yes, you should have it. It's uh, Matthew 9, verse 9. And he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, 
Not true. Jesus is talking. I mean, there's thousands of people at his foot. And he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Another word for laborer is worker. And after that, he says, therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborer into his harvest. So he's telling his disciple, guys, pray that the Lord will send harvester or worker. Do you understand that? So for those who have been here and are part of the furniture, that's what I say, right? You've been here for so long. And, and you know who you are, right? You know that there was about 10 of us. We used to sit down and pray that the God, close your eyes for a minute, close your eyes. We used to pray this prayer, okay? God, send worker, send liberal. And we said, you know, this church is empty, and, uh, you know, it was just a handful of us. God, we pray that you would send laborer into this field here. And I know sometimes it's about field someplace else. But we, we were very, very few people, basically. And open your eyes. Look around. He has sent worker. He has sent laborer. But well, we just got to kind of just motivate them to, to do what they're supposed to do. Because unless you... See, sharing your faith is probably the nicest and the most fulfilling things Amen. that you can do. Amen. I mean, we share our faith, my wife and I, right? And we saw people transform. Not because we transformed them. But because God took hold of them, and basically we saw the joy in them, and we saw the life come in. And you know what I mean? This is like a mother giving birth to a kid. And she looks at the baby and says, wow, amazing, amazing. And witnessing or sharing your faith is the same thing. Now, we, we got so busy pastoring, right? And we forgot to share our faith. And you know, in 1900, well, no, we're in 2000 now. A couple of years ago, we said to one another, okay, 2018 is coming over, it was January. We want to share our faith all the time. You know, we kind of pray and we said to one another, right? So, uh, yeah, come January, February. And you know, we don't do nothing. You're just too busy doing this and that and this and that. So then we said, okay, this is not working. Let's move, okay? So we move. So, but we said, when we move, I don't think the move had nothing to do with that. Is now we want to be Sharing our faith where we go. Okay, we would have shared our faith after here. But so we moved to Coburg. And the first three months, I was just working, working, just painting, doing everything, and no connection. But after that, I said, okay, now we've got to start connecting. We started sending invitations to the neighbor. I think we had about, in a corner, we have about eight neighbors. I went in the mailbox. They came to our place. And we told them, you know, we, we're Christian and all that stuff. And then uh, the girl that gave her testimony here, well, he, she, he was our neighbor, and we met them. And uh, yesterday we were at the Buddhist house, two houses down the road, and we're singing red, red wine with them. And my wife is playing the piano, you know, and I'm singing. And, uh, and then they said, well, who are you? Good question when you go in somebody's house, right? <laughs> well, we just move over there, and you know, you invited us a couple of months ago, and uh, we come now, and uh, we just want to play music with you guys. So one lady, we connected with one lady, she said, I want to talk to you guys about something, right? Anyway, everywhere we go, we leave a seed somewhere. And you know what? It's 
it's been like that, and you say, well, Pastor Jacques, it's because you want to start a church over there, so you're just telling everybody, no, we don't even talk about the church. We just want them to come to Christ. That is the only thing without anything else. Because if we, and you know what, now it's been four months, it's been a way of life. I mean, wherever we go, and that's not in my note, I didn't even start my message. <laughs> I want to say that everywhere we go, we went to a um, doll store. One lady's picking up all kinds of stuff. I said, what are you doing? She says, uh, I'm going to Cuba. And I said, wow. I said, we're going to Cuba too, a different place. And we start talking and said, okay, I'll tell you what. When we come back from Cuba, let's meet. We'll look at your picture. You look at our picture. We don't know the lady, right? <laughs> and, and you know, this is called connection. Anybody of you can do that. Anybody can connect, whether you're shy or not, and I'll, I'll tell you how anyway. But anyway, we never did meet with her because we lose our phone number. Would you believe? <laughs> I look on my phone. She looks on her phone. We're going to meet her because of disorganization. We didn't put her at the right place. I don't know. We can't find her phone number. Otherwise, we would go. We connected, but that was it. You know, there's more than that. Okay. So we see Saul, God did it. And um, we read the verse, we read the verse. Okay, I'll, I'm just I'm keeping in uh, focus here. Do we have a story to tell? Do you have a story to tell? I can't hear you. Do you have a story to tell? You do. And you know, the, the story that you have to tell is about God himself. That, you know, you were in bondage, maybe you're still tied up somewhere, but you're getting free. And freer each day. Because God is working on you. So as long as he's going to be working on you, that might be till you go home. Because you're going to say, well, I'm not really ready yet. You are ready. You're ready. Oh, so we have a story to tell. Um, So, Matthew 9, verse 36, we read that. No, let's read that again. Matthew 9, verse 36. Uh, see see the, the magic word, if I can say that, or the powerful word. He said, Jesus was moved with compassion. Something in his heart was moved because of the people. And something in our heart has to be moved to the people. Yes, we can say, do you know Jesus? Do you want to go to heaven? You can, whatever you say. But unless, you know, you're, there's compassion in your heart for people, you're not just going anywhere. And like I said, since three, four months ago now, I think we have over 40 people, maybe more, maybe now we've got about 45 that we are seeing and talking to it, not necessarily preaching to them, but working on a base that they will ask us, hey, I want to know more about you. I want to know more about Jesus. Something is different. So that, that's what we, you know, we don't want to stop. We're not doing it for, we just, it's like we like it. It, uh, you know, it's like the lady, uh, the, J the Japanese lady on TV there, like fold the clothes, how many knows her? You know, you were disorganized and now you're really, you've got everything placed in order and you've got everything organized, right, and everything, and you like it after. Witnessing is the same. Once you begin sharing, from your heart, the gospel, because you care about somebody that is not safe. Then it becomes a part of your heart. That's what you want to do. Not to get a notch on your gun, but just to know that this is God's heart. 
It is. So Matthew 9 verse 36 said he had compassion for them. Because they were scattered like sheep without a shepherd. You know, they didn't know the shepherd. They were scattered. Jesus had compassion. And that's her heart. God cares. And if God cares, then I care. You know, he created man. And he created woman. But he wants them back home. He'll leave the 99 to go to that one. And you know, we have to understand that. So there's three steps. Okay? Now I'm getting to three steps. I'm going to watch the time. Three steps. Number one. Do you want to be a witness? Yes. Do you want to be a witness? Yes. All right. Don't say my husband will do it. My wife will do it. <laughs> I'm too busy. Or you can say all kinds of stuff. Just say yes, Lord, I'll do it. I'll do I'll do it. And you may start with that. Maybe a defiance attitude, but because the pastor is asking you to do it, but I'm not asking you to do anything. So the number one thing you got to do is connect. Connect. You can connect. You can get out of here, go at Harvey and connect. It's so easy to connect. Because uh, I can connect with anybody anytime, maybe sometime too much. I go shopping with my wife, and she's she's driving the buggy, and she's got a mindset, and she's going everywhere, and I'm looking at people. Who am I going to connect with? I know you. I saw you before. I don't know. It's just me. I hate to shopping except connect. <laughs> Is that true? You don't want to comment on it? No. Okay. <laughs> So you got to connect. That's easy to connect. you got to build a platform, and I'm going to use this as building a platform, okay, to share. And then you got to share your faith, okay? So we got three things we got to do. And if you do that, you're liable to get somebody in the kingdom of God. You connect with them. You don't know them from Adam. You, you begin to share. Uh, you begin to Build a platform, which I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. And then, because you know what? If we look at, uh, can you put that um, um, John 4, uh, verse 7? And this is how Jesus connected with the woman. What did he do? He didn't say, oh, I like your hair today. (laughs) Because he had a plan. He had a platform that he wanted to be on. Because when you're on that platform, you're leading the way. You're bringing, they're following you over there. And you know, that may be leadership skill or whatever, but as, as far as you in the marketplace, anywhere, you have to lead the way to somebody because they don't know. You know, we got a little book uh, a couple of months ago, about scam. I mean, the phone scam, there's a TV scam, you name it. Scam, scam, scam. People are very weary about anything. So if you're going to connect, they say, oh, he's, there's a scam here. You know, why is, is he talking to me? People think like that, right? Jesus said to her, give me a drink. And you know, for her, didn't connect too much. But he connect with her. Now there's a discussion going. He said, uh, if you would know who I am, you would ask me for the living water. See, he's taking his place here now. He's going up here, right? Because he wants her to follow what he's saying. Because he has a purpose. He wants to bring her to himself. Or, you know, we say, bring her to God, whatever. And he wants to minister to her. So he's leading the way. He connects with her. And, you know, to connect is very easy. 
You can connect with a baby. You can connect with somebody that uh, has good clothes. Hey, I like your clothes. Nice. Where'd you get that? My grandma, my grandmother used to make something like that. <laughs> no, you don't say that. No, no. That, that's that's a disconnect. <laughs> I, and you say, you know, I, I like your glasses, uh, your hair, or, you know, people have tattoos, you know, they love to show their tattoo, you know, they walk around with their sleeve right up and, you know, they show their tattoo. Wow, look at that tattoo. You know, we were in Cuba and this, this girl, I don't know, she's about 20, 22, she, and uh, she comes from Toronto and she's shaved like this. And she shaved like this. And you didn't know at first if it was a boy or a girl. So I said to her, I said, I love your hair. Right? I like it. Oh, my golly, she got all friendly. She said, you can have my phone anytime you want. We were looking for somebody to phone here because our card didn't work. And she can have, you can have our phone, you know, just a nice little thing that you say to somebody. Whether it's at uh, uh, Loblaws, or there's no Loblaws around here, eh? no, okay, or uh, anyway it is, uh, the doll store, or Giant Tiger, or whatever, now you know where we shop, eh? So, <laughs> wherever, you know, you can connect just like that. You know, I, I was, uh, but you know, you need God too. The Spirit of God works, He's connected in you, right? And uh, we just came out of church. We went to a church in, in Poor Hope. We stopped in a store. And uh, we're walking down the line. And she's looking for stuff. You know what I'm doing? Checking out people. Yes. And I see this lady. She's probably about 50 or so. And when I saw her, I heard a voice and says, Ask her if she's a Christian, okay? Well, that's not a good way to connect with people. And I said, no, I, I'm thinking to myself, I must have had a thought, right? But it wouldn't go away. She's a believer. She's a believer, kind. So we get in the corner of the store, and I said, okay, let's do it easily. I said, hey there, we just finished, uh, we just came from church, and uh, we stopped here, and nice to see you. Whatever. Yeah, I just came from church, too. And she said, yeah, I will go to Pentecostal church uh, over there, whatever. And she was a believer, right? Because, and then we go to the next door. And I'll tell you what happened at the next door after. Because you get in that mindset that you want to share with somebody. And you know, it's easy to connect. Okay, somebody has a big uh, lobe uh, hearing there, you know, you can put your finger through it there. Wow, this is, looks good on you, man. Looks good. And you know, they get all frilly. Ooh, my, I'm showing it, right? It looks good. <laughs> now you got connection. You understand that? Yeah. Anybody can connect to anybody now? I mean, you see a little dog with somebody that's, well, look at that little, little yeah. dog. You know? Nobody walks that cat but the dog, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you can connect. I bet you you can get out of this place here. We connect with, unless you go home, but connect with somebody within uh, 10 minutes if you want to. But you have a purpose. It's to bring them to Christ. And you know, once you begin to think that way, nobody can stop you. You're unstoppable, right? So you have to work with conjunction to the Holy Spirit. That's a big word. You have to work with the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes, you know, we have to ask the Holy Spirit what he thinks of it, right? He's the boss. And he will speak to us. Sometimes we don't hear nothing. Uh, but sometimes we do. Okay, let's do con connection we did. You understand connection? How many can connect? Tell your neighbor, I think I can connect. Yes. Don't connect with somebody that's uh, here. Connect with somebody that's not here. Okay. Okay. Now build a platform. Okay, that's step number two. Now sometimes we do that. Now, 
Brian, if you want to put the next slide, it's about um, a woman at the well. And that's the, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here again to draw. Now, she, is she thinking in the natural? Yes. yes, she is. But Jesus, he is on the platform, right? He's leading her. He's bringing her someplace. He wants to bring her to the place where she desire that water that he's talking about. Do you understand that? And you know what? When you meet somebody, that's why it's such a hard thing because I've noticed you can see pain in people. You can see worry in people. And you can see things that uh, if you just look, I mean, uh, you know, you can see that, man alive, how are they functioning because they're nervous, something is happening with them. And I mean, you don't need to be an Einstein to know that because we were talking about Einstein on the way here. You don't need to do that. You just simply look at them. They may have a smile on. But behind the smile, there's pain, there's hurt, whatever there is there. And you know, you can put your finger on it very quick. Mostly when you're walking with God. See God. So when you connect with somebody, you want to take the, the lead and say, Okay, Father, what am I supposed to do here? You're working with me, I'm working with you, you're the boss. Do give me a lead, and if I don't have a lead, then I'll lead with something. Uh, after we uh, we went to that store, we went to the pet shop to buy cat food. And I get to the cash, and the guy is there talking about leading, but I don't know where I'm going to lead from with this one. And I said to the guy, I said. Uh, I got my stuff. And he's a big little guy, you know, and maybe 18. And he said to me, that all? I said, yeah. He said, by the way, I said, do you interpret dream? And he looks at me, do I what? <laughs> do you interpret dreams? Because you work in a pet shop here. And he said, I said, last night I had the dream, which is true. And in my dream, I had this little dog. See, I'm talking to him now. Connecting. Okay. I'm building a platform. I'm leading. And I said, my wife was there. I mean, I said to him, I said, uh, this little dog was chasing the big dog. And then in my dream, the big dog got mad. He turned around and he ate the little dog. <laughs> so he's looking at me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's looking at me and he, he said, I know. I said, what? He said, you're having problem. And there's a small problem. And he said, there's something bigger problem coming, which can overtake the little problem. And I said to him, wow, I said, you guys, you're good. You're good. I didn't accept his translation in my heart. But I connected with him. Now, last time I went to talk, I was going to take it from my uh, step place, right? Because I'm leading, and talk to him about dreams when people have dreams. Because I go there once a month, right? So I'm going to do one thing at a time. But when I went there, there was another customer. I couldn't do it. So I, I'm coming back. When I come back, he looks at me. You're the dream guy. <laughs> he knows me. But now I can go a little further and talk to him about, you know, uh, putting God in, in his life, right? So, so you're building, and, and you know, let, let's look at it this way. If Jesus was at the well talking with that woman, say if he talked to him for half an hour or 15, half an hour, and say if the disciple were to come back 15 minutes earlier and say, Liz, Jesus, we're late, let's go. He would have left her, wanting to know more about 
what he was talking about. Because he was leading her and she was following him and she realized that who was talking to him and she would have never left it like that. Another example, whether it's good, whether it's bad, you have a fight with your brother and you never talk to him for 15 years and then you meet him on the road face to face, what's going to happen? Whatever you were talking to him last time you left is going to come back. You did that to me. No, you did that to me first. And you know what? Because they're taking it where you left off. So you can leave things off here and there as long as you're leading the way. And as you lead the way and you talk to them, they're going to want to say, tell me more. Uh, you know, last time you left because this guy came in and you had to go. You were talking about this. Uh, what were you saying? They will say that to you. Once you connect with them, once you, uh, you, uh, you begin to build that platform, you can come back in five years and say, hey, I'm the guy who, you translate my dream. Yes, I remember. But there's more to it. I'm going to tell you more. All right? So you understand that? So you got to do that. So the next thing is, uh, let's see. Uh, Verse 15. You got verse 15, Brian? Now she's getting hungry. How you do that, for example... She said, well, my husband left me six months ago. Uh, you know, because, you know, uh, where's your husband? Or it comes up. Things comes up in a conversation just like that. Wow, that must be painful. Uh, you know, how are you doing? You know, like, uh, I mean, you just met that lady uh, beside the popcorn machine. First thing you know, because you're leading her... You're leading the conversation. She's speaking. She's telling you her issue. She's telling you her heart. And you know what? You're leading because you're on the platform. Have to understand that. Don't don't say, well, wherever it takes me. No, no. Wherever you take that person, you have to take that person someplace. And the Spirit of God will lead you sometimes, say, shut up, don't say that, but say, say that, okay? So, you understand? So that's building a platform. We all have to build, we have to learn. We have to learn to look at people. We have to learn to, what's the word, uh, you know? Somebody help me. Huh? Not accept? No. It's a, it's a deeper connection. Yeah, yeah, their heart, their need. Because, you know what? If somebody comes to you and, you know, they, they just lost their, their, their child. I mean, they, you know, they're hurting inside. You can't bury your son or you bury your daughter without any pain and walking away from the grave. It takes you a long time. And you know that she just told you oh, this happened to me. I mean, listen, the book is open. You've got a platform. You can't basically, that lady, by the time you're done, you, you know, she you will have shared your faith with her and she'll say, I want, I want that. You know, it is. But it's you, you have to build that platform. And the last one is share your faith. Is uh, going deeper, uh, showing them where God is. And you know, you, you can do that. Um, selfishly. Or you can do that with the Spirit of God. And I'll tell you what. When the Spirit of God leads you 
to someone who's hurting and you're sharing your faith with them, that practically there is no way they can get out of it because you touch their heart so deep. Because really, it's not you who's doing it, it's him. And all we have to do is learn to work with him. You know, I'll give you an example. Uh, I shared that example one time with you guys, so some of you may have heard it. But I never shared that example, except I went to the dentist, my wife knows. And uh, I had a, a tooth that was chipped. So I'm laying on that um, chair, and we had to work, wait for the dentist to come. So the girl says to me, well, we got some time. Yeah, I said, yeah. She'll be in at 10, 15 minutes. So she said, oh, by the way, what happened to your tooth? And I said to her, I said, uh, so you don't want to know. <laughs> I think I shouldn't have said that. Because she start to hassle me and say, come on, I'll believe you. I said, no, you won't believe me. But anyway, uh, so she asked me to three times. I said, okay. I don't usually share that with uh, people, but <laughs> I said, I was coming back from Peterborough with my wife. You know, we're pastor at the crossroad here. Somebody said, come and pray for my son. So we went and prayed for the son. So we get in the house, and when we get in the house, the grandmother said, well, sit down over here, you know, family room. So we sat there. And the boy that needed prayer is 15 years old. How many of you remember that story? Oh, you remember? Right. Every time I say I say exactly the same. I've never changed one word if I say it. And so uh, we sat down, the son came out of the bedroom, and uh, he's 15, 16, and he's the one who needed prayer. And he comes running, and he rams the grandmother on the floor. Boom, the grandmother goes right down. Well, um, okay, this is supposed to be a nice meeting. It's a prayer meeting, right? So I got up, and I to take him. His father was there. His father, me and the father got up to... to uh, to handle the situation, get a hold of him. I mean, he was going for everybody. So, just a minute. I might run dry on that one. I'm telling you what not to do now, okay? So, um, me and the father gets up. The father weighs 300 pounds. He's way bigger. I'm 200. He weighs 300. He's taller, wider, this way, this way. <laughs> and we grab him to stop him. I don't want him to hurt this poor grandmother. So we get a hold of him. First thing we know, my head is on the ceiling. And his head is on the ceiling. Because this guy grabbed both of us like that and brought us to the ceiling. And, uh, you know, your, your, wife, your head is like a computer, right? And I'm thinking, like, really fast, but, okay, that's not normal. <laughs> and I'm looking to him and, and uh, the, the father, and I think he was thinking the same thing. So... And then I'm looking at my wife, and she's like that. She's not saying nothing. Her mouth is open. It's like, okay, now we got a situation on our hand. I mean, this is strength i never seen before. This is strength. This is strength. So for what happened next, it was a, a big battle. Physically, spiritually, and, uh, you know, like... All I remember is laying on the floor on one side of him, him laying on the floor on the other side of him. All we wanted was to pray for him. But it was like a, a UFO, not UFO, but those wrestling match there. What is it called? 
WWF. Yeah. And I said to the father, I said, hold his right hand really tight. He said, okay, I'll do that. He's on his back. We're on top of him. And then I'm holding his left hand, and I've never, I could barely hold his left hand. And I said, don't let go, but guess what? He let go. And when he let go, that's when he punched me. And you know, that's about the tooth we're talking about, right? (laughs) And she's looking at me. She's not moving. She looked, and I don't know why I was telling her the story because she asked me. I don't know. I just wanted to be honest in a way. And I said, when he hit me, it's like everything kicked in. My emotion kicked right off. My spiritual, everything, basically my strength is like he hit the magic button. He pushed the right. You shouldn't have done that, boy. You shouldn't have done that. And I only remember being on top of him. And, you know, just, just calling on the name of Jesus. And, you know, it was still a battle. But, you know, first thing you know, he's just drained out, laying there. And you know what? He came to church after here. Three, four times, and they moved to, uh, to Montreal anyway. And I'm saying that to tell you that. I took a platform here, which I wasn't. Now what are you going to do? How are you going to share Christ with her? Now I'm a, a cast out a demon, right? Out of this man. How do you follow that? I'm not leading her to Christ. I'm telling her a story. And sometimes we'll get involved telling a story that doesn't really matter. Just because we like to share, we like to talk, but we off someplace else and that's where I was with this lady you know so now I'm going to see her again I'm going to go back and get my teeth work or whatever maybe uh, six months could be a year now I had a big platform here but that was my platform I wasn't leading her she was following me but now how do I communicate with her because I still want to share God with her she know. I said, you remember me? Oh, I remember you, all right. <laughs> but uh, I have to go another way now. You know what way? When I left, she was pregnant. She was going to have a baby. So I figured, God, I'm going to change my topic here. Talk about the baby. Talk about how God was to her. And you know what I mean? Now I want to like, be able to have God working in what? I'm doing. You understand? It's so easy. So easy. Okay, we've got, I haven't got much time. Did you ever see the walk to heaven? Or the walk to hell? I just made it up. That's what I got there. Remember? I told you, remember? Nobody reminded me. <laughs> so, but I just thought. So, heaven is there. Hell is there. And you know how the, the kids, they play hockey and they all go like this, yeah, 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 right? You see that? My grandkids, they play hockey and, and you see that on TV. After the judgment, everybody's going to be there. Hell's over there. Heaven's over there. We're saved, right? We know that our name is in the book. We know where heaven is. Yes, there's going to be judgment, but we're going to heaven. That's the walk to heaven. And we're walking there, and then there's a walk to hell. And then you, you meet the... Uh, I remember you. Yeah, I saw you in the store. You never told me about Jesus. Well, um, yeah, I was busy that day. That's okay, but that's fine. Well, that's not fine for me. And he goes this way, and then you meet somebody. I remember you. Yeah, you were at Walmart. I talked to you. Yeah, you did talk to me, but you never told me about heaven. You never told me about hell. You never said nothing. You could have said, please, share the gospel with me. And now I'm walking to hell. And you know what? That can go on and on and on and on. And that's really... What I'm saying to you, it matters 
who you share the gospel with. And you know, if there's such a thing as a walk to heaven and a walk to hell, I think we better close our eyes. Because there's going to be people here that you had them in your hand. You had the platform. You could have shared the gospel. They were hurting, but you were too busy. Or maybe you didn't want to care. So I'm touching your heart. So that you remember, this is our job. You know, we do it unto the Lord. Until we come back. Because so many people are hurting. So many people do not know Christ. And I know there's religion, but you know, your heart effect, your heart effect will break religion, will break denomination. They will see God in you because there might be tears coming down. There might be, a, you look like you're caring for them. Do you care for your neighbor? Let's stand up. Let's stand. You know, I'm not going to get you to commit yourself to go out there. It's up to you. You do. You know, all I want to do is motivate you to do it. I know for the last three, four months, it really has changed our mindset. It doesn't matter where I walk. All I see is people that need Jesus. And you know what? Because you guys are the worker. We prayed 15 years ago that God will send the workers. And the workers are here today. And the worker has to get going. Because the time is short. You know, we're, we're in times where, you know, the mark of the beast should pop any time. Like, who knows? I mean, this is, you know, the war and rumors of war and politics and all that stuff and all kinds of stuff going on. We have to populate heaven. And you know what? That's all God is asking you, us to do. Walk with him and bring all who we can with us. Serious game. And it's not a game. It's serious. Tell your neighbor, I think he's serious. Well, you got to look at him if you're going to tell him. Come on, tell him. I think he's serious. Yes, I am serious. So sometimes we get busy with the church family, and I know I'm part of it. But you know, you're going to go place this week, you're going to meet people that I'll never meet. And there's your opportunity, you know. Hey, Johnny, I like your hair. What did you do? You put some brill cream in it, right? You still got some of that stuff? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and you know, it doesn't take much. I mean, John, you, you drop into a, to a French uh, village there in, in Quebec and you say, Hey, good, 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 good. Or bon, 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 bon. Yeah, you know, they're going to fall in love with you. I don't know how you're going to figure out to share the gospel, but they're going to fall in love with you. Oh, God is good. God is good. So let's close our eyes. Lord Jesus, we, uh, we just want to take after you, Lord, how you ministered to that woman, Lord, at the well, how she got hungry, and how, Father, how that you, Lord Jesus, blessed her. And changed her whole mindset about herself. Went down, got everybody, and brought them to you, Lord. And you stayed there two days, Lord. And you ministered to broken heart. So, Father, we see that. And, Father, help us to connect with people. Help us to lead them in a conversation that we would see their pain. And, Father, that we may share the gospel and what you have done for us. It's so simple, Lord. We're just so sorry we didn't do it before, or we let it down, or whatever. We want to come back here next week. Maybe I bring somebody. 
I'm so happy. Maybe somebody's going to come. Maybe uh, I led somebody to the Lord. Maybe, 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 Father. But, Lord, we know that your word will not return void and will produce what it's meant to produce, Father. We just give you thanks. We just praise you, Lord. And, Father, just bless everyone here, Lord. They are harvester. They are worker. They are fully equipped, Lord. Father, they just don't know which go way to go, Lord. But, Father, just open the door. They will go, Father, and lead someone somewhere to you, Lord. We just give you thanks. We just praise you, Lord. You're an awesome God. Everybody listen and say, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father.